Hey guys, so I'm here to share my lockdown favourites and the reason I wanted to do this now is because reflecting back, these are the things that have aided me in relaxation, sleep, pattern, um, just anti-anxiety, quality time. Um, I'm going to talk about books, podcasts, um, sleep aids, um, relaxing, um, slippers, all sorts of things. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to dive right into it. There's a brand that I have bought things from for ages. It's Castle Farm in Kent and they have an online shop called The Hop Shop. And I saw once a video, um, a Claire Chanel video, and she did like a photo shoot and stuff there and she was promoting it. But I really like lavender. I'm like quite highly obsessed. But what they do that specifically I really enjoy is lavender mixed with hops, which gives a very sleepy vibe. So these are the chamomile and herb blend, like sleepy tea. It's obviously caffeine free. They taste delicious and I put in a teaspoon of the Kentish lavender honey from the farm as well. So this is like my evening drink, obviously now, well obviously, but I used to sometimes have a coffee, an espresso or a coffee after dinner, now I don't. When I'm in a phase where I'm aware that I'm having a hard time with sleeping, it goes up and down. Um, this is a really soothing bedtime drink. And similarly, they make um, this hop and lavender sleepy scent essential oil blend, which I use in the Muji diffusers, like specifically in my five year old's bedroom a little bit before she's getting ready for bed. And I feel like the room has this nice calming scent. Definitely seems to be that the nights that we do that, she's less likely to wake in the night and sleeps really deeply and goes off to sleep quicker. Um, so it's just really nice. You can put a couple of drops on your pillow. It doesn't seem to stain, it washes right out. Um, or they do like pads that you can put this on and put them like in between your pillow and the pillow slip. Or as I said, we really like the Muji cold diffusers rather than burning essential oils where they can, you don't get the health benefits, they can go a bit acrid. I like cold diffusing for the pure smell. And um, yeah, all these things together just, um, when I smell it, I just associate it with comfort. And it's not just a harsh, astringent, quite herbal lavender. It's very softened by the other things in the blend. Um, does it say? No. But it's hops, chamomile, lavender. It's nice. Another thing that I used to have and I kind of ran out of it, or maybe it went bad because I didn't use it all up. But uh, I love this. The brand is 100, 1,000 and, sorry, bleh! A thousand and one remedies and this is the good night sleep relaxing balm and um similar actually no it's not quite the same it's an aromatherapy sort of solid balm that you put on pulse points and it it's anti-anxiety and relaxes you um sleep relaxing balm rub in the hollow of your chest inside the wrists um, there, I didn't keep the box. It's got all the ingredients, but it's got so many things in it. It's a lovely, lovely natural smell that is like a comfort blanket to me. And um, I always have this when I travel and stuff. And it just, I've been doing these things like with the tea and the oil and this and reading instead of screen time just to make me sleepy for like 30 minutes before I drop off and just, it's really helps. But I really recommend this, especially if you're stressed out. Another thing that's part of this whole bedtime like comfort routine has been discovering, probably the last person in the world to know about these, space masks from spacemasks.com. Harriet from Space Masks, the founder, has the most amazing Instagram. She just talks to camera. She does it every day and she's just so witty and very eccentrically English in a very fun way. I just love her. She's got such dogs like me. So this is the kind of general standard one. Um, I was going to save one from the other night to show you, but because I don't, when you open this, they become activated and then I'd have to use it right away. So basically it's a self-heating eye mask with, um, that warms up with little ear things like you get on the face masks now. It doesn't go all the way around the back of your head and it warms up and it really makes you drop any tension around your forehead and eye area, which I have a lot. <laughs> this one, the original one has got slight jazz. They're not scented. It's very, very subtle. It's got jasmine oil and then this limited edition one is rose. I don't know which one I like more. I might like the rose one more. The rose ones they still have and um, the they be, it benefits the Royal Marsden. You can get subscriptions of these. I now have like a thing I think where 
I get a box, uh, they do the slim letterbox ones where you get seven for about £20 every month because I do use these several times a week and run out and stuff. And they're just really good. Also, if you put one of those on, you cannot look at your phone because you've got a mask on. So I like set up a podcast or an audio book with a sleep timer, put one of those on. I've got my balm on. I may have my oil going. I may have had my tea. Like really, that is going to knock you down, knock you out Valium level, but in a natural way. Okay, just looking at my notes. Okay, this is a biggie. I'm not going to unwrap it. It's huge two different sides so this is one of the barefoot dreams into the wild is it throw with the leopard like print and i have looked at these when the nordstrom sales come around and all the rest of it and thought is it worth it because obviously us brits we have to pay um import duties and things on things that we buy from the states but in the end this wasn't available for the longest time i think they sell a bunch of them when they have an event because this comes in all different colors but I wanted this colour because it go, it coordinates. It's very subtle. It's not too obviously leopardy because it's not like tan and black or whatever. And basically I was sick of buying inexpensive throws that don't even last a year. They get bobbly or I had one with pearls on that was fake, fake fur. It was really nice. But after eight, ten months, it looked really raggedy. And I'm spending like 30, 40, 50 pounds on these things. I'm, I haven't had it long enough to tell you, but I think this is going to last a long time. It's really weird. It's like a thick fleece, but it's stretchy. Haven't tried to wash it yet. If you've got one and you've washed it, please leave a comment down below. Um, I'm very, very mean about this blanket. I don't let the kids use it. It's up here in my room draped over an armchair because we're having hot weather. But if I was going to go and snuggle in the living room, I would take this down and I would take it away again when I go to bed because my kids like they just spill popcorn and they just trash anything you give them so this is just mine because it was really expensive but so far I feel like it's worth it when you get a little cold snap and you want to snuggle up on the sofa it's just so nice and snuggly and comforting okay I think that's all the oh and the only other kind of cozy it's not really sleep related because you wouldn't sleep in them but obviously at the start of lockdown we were just fully in the house there was no there was the one trip to exercise a day there was picking up food well not at the start there wasn't we were having everything delivered or dropped by friends because we went into self-isolation due to symptoms before the official lockdown happened in the UK so we had two weeks of self-isolation or three weeks for all of us to have be clear of two two weeks no symptoms and then the lockdown started to kind of at the tail end of that and so it just was anyway so normal clothes and shoes went out the out the window for a while I still was putting on a blouse now and then and a bit of makeup but obviously footwear was just slippers and then when we were going out on an errand I just had like one pair of sneakers that I was wearing because I was leaving them right by the front door if it was dry even outside so that I wasn't traipsing in possibly corona on the bottom of my shoes anyway the long and the short of it is I bought loads of slippers because I had one pair of fluffy slippers that were on the way out and I thought if I'm spending all day uh, every day at home I want nice slippers that are comfortable and also don't just ruin my outfit I know that sounds extra but, but that are cute so the first pair I got were these little Karl Lagerfeld ones and they're just like black fake fur but they've got open toes so nice and then there's a company on Instagram, a small business in the UK called Oni. I think it's Oni. Anyway, they do these little felt kind of Scandi style um, house slippers, but they are almost like a comfy, very like nice ballet pump. So they look cute with jeans and stuff and they're not like big and hot and fluffy like other cushions and uh, cushions, other slippers. And they've just got like a little sole like that. And um I really like these so those were those um in general i'm going to touch on luxury at the end of this video and show you another high street bag and talk about my feelings about luxury at the moment and a bit of a recap after my vlog sale but we'll just go through some other things so in terms of entertainment and books and stuff i have just read the first of this series so i really like series of books i like it to have another one to go on to not just always a standalone novel it's my thing so um 
there's a writer called Cassandra Clare and she's written this huge series, um, The Mortal Instruments is probably the most well-known bit. And then this is like a Victorian era prequel called The Infernal Devices. So this is set in Victorian London and I've just finished book one, which is called Clockwork Angel. And then from Amazon today arrived Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess. And this is a this is where London, well, the world, because when they come to the modern age, the other books like The Mortal Instruments are set more like present day, but this is like a prequel of Victorian times. You're basically talking about um, the world as we know it and then a down world, kind of like, um, well, not as hellish as in Strange Things, but kind of like a, da like a darker side, magical side to London where you've got warlocks, vampires, demons, then these shadow hunters who are the goodies who kind of police that world and keep things in check. I think it's actually aimed as like a teen fiction thing, but I'm just really enjoying it. It's light. I love that whole magical witches, vampires, whole world. Um, I've read several series and I've talked about them on my channel. But uh, if you want something to get into that is really engaging, I really recommend this series. And there's only three and then I'd have to jump to her other titles are set more present day, but I'm really enjoying them. Um, in terms of um, TV, we got the new Disney app. What is it? It was Disney Life before. What is it now? Disney Plus. And um, my husband persuaded me to watch The Mandalorian with him, which is a spin off of Star Wars. And at first I was a bit like, mm, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Like, obviously, I've seen all the movies and especially the first three that were out um, are classics and all the rest of it but it's not like this thing that I'm usually obsessed with at all and um, but I honestly loved it so so much it was on every night every Friday they put a new one out all through lockdown and it's got a baby Yoda type creature in it it's got this guy who you don't see his face he's this Mandalorian he's like you know he's like a bail hunter kind of guy goes and rounds people up who have skipped bail and need to be handed over but it's just so good each one's got a themed story but then there's a story that goes through like a backstory it's just self-contained it's an hour and it's completely and utterly compelling and they've got another series coming out exclusively to that disney platform in october hopefully and when it was the eighth and final episode of the season, we were both on the edge of our seats and we were gutted that there were no more. And that's a sign of a good TV show. Like everyone else in the world, <laughs> I had read the book already, but I just really enjoyed the TV adaptation of Normal People. I thought it was just so subtly and the relationships were so nuanced and real. I really, really thought the main two leads in it were so good so I think obviously I think maybe I mean they're funny with the iPlayer aren't they how they take things down but I think all of it is on the BBC iPlayer still highly recommend that it's about two young people who meet at school in Ireland and they're on off relationship but it's just so much more than that really good uh other things that I've watched that I really enjoyed on Netflix, I watched Unorthodox about an Orthodox Jewish girl and her experience. She goes through getting married and finds things really difficult and changes her life quite dramatically and makes a big journey. And it's just really well done. And then I watched the documentary that they put with it about how they made it and behind the scenes. And I love that sort of stuff. So good. You've really got to watch that. And last of all, for a bit of light stuff, I watched... New Amsterdam on Amazon. I really love that. It's a hospital drama. It's not so gritty realism y as some other ones, maybe like, I mean, is that gritty realism ER? It's it's slightly lighter, even though it's set in a hospital and, and terrible things happen. Some of it's not massively realistic, but I just find now that I've kind of got used to the characters, a comforting watch. And I zip through that second series in in no time at all. I really love that. So that's New Amsterdam set in a big hospital in New York City. Um, in terms of um, podcasts, I love podcasts. I love audiobooks on Audible. I love just the BBC Sounds app and how you can get all their programming when you want to listen to it. And um, my favourite 
podcast i bought the books so you've got something to look at because not much eye candy so this is the table manners cookbook so this is jessie ware and her mum lenny ware and they live in london and um they are a jewish family and they have a holiday place in a little island in greece so i can't remember the name of the island so there's lots of interesting influences in the way that they cook and so they have on their podcast there's about six series now you can go back god i'm jealous of anyone who hasn't listened to any of it because you've got a lot of fun to listen to but um they have a guest on there obviously pre-lockdown the guest would come round to their house because jesse was living with her mum for quite a lot of it because her house was being renovated so they had someone round for lunch or dinner and they would interview them but the interview would focus quite a lot on food and they're, you know, what did you grow up eating? And what's your favorite, where's your favorite restaurants? And just, it's just really nice chat. And they've brought out a book and I've made quite a few things out of here. And everything I've made has been super nice. I'm just scrolling, can I find? The triple threat brownies are really good. And I have made, where's the chicken thing? Oh, there's a, there's a few chicken things. Oh, deviled eggs. Um, I made this. Salmon with ginger and coriander crumb. Um, so a lot of these recipes are featured on, in, you know, like what they cook on the podcast. Chicken payard, absolute classic, very simple. Recommend the book, recommend the podcast. Um, my other favourite podcast has been the BBC's Corona Newscast. I just like the presenters. You've got people popping up on there from Europe, like Katia Adler. Katia Adler? What? Kat Katia Adler, who is like, um, she's always the correspondent who's based in Brussels doing a lot of the Brexit stuff, but she's kind of doing that and also talking about Corona and, and what's happening on the continent. And then you've got, um, oh, what's her name? I knew I wouldn't remember. The main, one of the main politics editors on the BBC. You've just got really good you get emily maitlis sometimes on there um it's really good and i like their they have human interest angles and then a review of what's going on with the government and stuff i just what, listen to it every day and i really like it uh i feel like it's a gentler way to get a discussion around everything without watching news cycle too much and it's quite an elevated intelligent discussion of what's going on um deliveries so i'm gonna try and insert a little clip but um at the end maybe I, I got a new blender so that we could have green smoothies and try and get more good stuff into our diet and that's going really well it's a magi mix i didn't go with the super expensive vita mix option not because of the money but i just got so bogged down with reviewing all the different models that are available that it just made my head explode and I thought, I can't get this wrong. If I spend five, six hundred quid on this super duper blender, and then actually, if you look at retailers' websites that sell it and you look at the reviews, there were as many people who said, oh, it, it vibrates across the counter. It's so loud. I felt like I still had chunks of spinach in my smoothies. I just was like, I'm sure they're amazing if you get the right one. Some aren't good for small batches. Some aren't good for big batches. It just so I just thought I want to spend more than a crappy blender, which I had, but not crazy money. And I found one. I think I found the sweet spot. Um, a glass jug was important to me, not plastic and powerful blades enough to get through chia seeds and oats and stuff. And I have a really good blender and I am we are just loving it. Um, and I'll leave details of it in the comments uh, in the bar down below. And then I've been having um, deliveries. Um, I think life just felt so monotonous at one point. So we started getting um, every other week. I felt every week was extravagant for me. So every other week I get flowers delivered from Vela Flowers, V-E-L-A. They are a small company here in the UK. And I had previously tried um, another big company, um, a bigger player, I think Bloom and Wild or Bloom, Bloom and something. And I just felt like it's hit and miss. Like I sent a friend flowers for her birthday. They weren't in good condition. These are like letterbox flowers that just come through the door and you arrange them. But I think partly in the context of lockdown, for some reason, whoever they were, I think they were using Royal Mail and the flowers were being held up in the post and were arriving beyond help. And if you're spending 25 quid on flowers, you kind of need them to 
revive when you put them in water. I felt sorry for the company, but if you can't find a way to get that fresh product to people quickly and they're just so limp and they're in bud and they never bloom, it's just pointless. So I decided to try Vella because there was an article in the paper about the top 10 best flower delivery people and they were the number one. And I tried them and I've been so impressed so far. Interesting, unusual flowers arrive in great condition. They have a lot of discount codes flying around. I'm paying 14, I think I paid 14 for my first three and now I'm up to 20 because my introductory periods ended, but they're so good. They last a week, I'm really impressed. Second thing is Meg Rivers, which is a small, um, I think the Tetbury based online bakery. I've used them off and on for years, but we decided to treat ourselves to a cake club. So once a month we receive the cake of the month and then we don't really, I haven't been making cake much or, you know, the odd dessert on the weekend. But I'm just like, we're having a cake, a big cake. They're not iced, so they're not that bad um, sugar wise. And we have a lovely cake and it's a surprise once a month and everybody enjoys that. It's cherry and almond at the moment. And it's really nice. Um, and last of all, Riverford. So I managed, to, after they had like had to go in a semi, they had to shut their app and not take new people or not let you change your order from a sporadic order to a regular order. I am now getting a local-ish organic fruit box and veg box every week from Riverford Organic. And um, that is really helping us to just refocus our cooking and menu around the vegetables rather than the vegetables being an afterthought and things that don't get used up go in the juicer or the smoothie maker thing so I'm really enjoying those things and they when things something's coming like that it gives you something to be excited about um I had off and on I've been making my own bread I haven't gone down the rabbit hole of the whole sourdough thing I know me I've learned me over the years and what will trigger stress and set me up for failure and managing and parenting a sourdough starter in a fridge just is a shade too far for me at the moment. I'm not saying I'll never do it. So I've just been making classic um, tin loaves now and then using a mixture of different, like I, I've been experimenting with my flour mix. Um, I'm doing like a kind of a 30% spelt, 60%, 70% regular flour organic stone ground flour and that's producing a nice loaf that's not too wholemeal but that and that is a bit healthy and that this lot will eat and that's been fun but the thing I wanted to show you in the favourites is this linen bread bags from the breadstory.com I got these from Amazon in a pack of three they're linen they're drawstring and they're really good I buy sourdough loaves from a lovely local bakery they're really big and round so I split them in half um, if I get a whole sourdough loaf, I put half in here and I put the other half in the freezer. And basically, I feel like the bread stays in good condition for ages in here because this is like breathable. It's The sourdough I get is a nice kind of, not dry, it's moist in the centre, but it just doesn't go bad quickly. I can keep my sourdough going for four days plus in this Amazon. Um, face masks for Corona. Um, I'm using them off and on. I have one with me that's clean and ready to go whenever I go out in my bag or whatever, but I don't always, and I take disposable gloves, but I don't always feel the need to use them. If I go into a supermarket or a small local, I don't know, post office, fruit shop, veg shop, butchers, whatever, and I feel like the social distancing is not really happening, then I will, but I just need I'm not really use, I don't use public transport in general unless I'm in London and the disposable paper ones they're selling them at the till points in Marks and Spencer's I have a few packets of those excuse me <coughs> <coughs> I should cough in my elbow but I'm at home um I don't like them I like the feel of cotton so I found these this is from Brora who are a lovely Scottish cashmere company and they've been making these pleated face coverings it's got a wire in it to shape around your nose they're comfortable they're breathable they're light they are they don't have filters in I've seen some other there are lots of cotton masks available with you can put the carbon filter sheets that you can then throw away and then wash but I'm just doing it as a face covering to protect others when I'm out that's the whole point of the masks people don't get it when you wear the mask it offers you no protection 
but you do it for other people and that's what you should do in case you have the virus but you are not aware that you have it and you're asymptomatic you should wear one of these if you are going to go somewhere where social distancing is difficult to achieve so i just have one with me but these are liberty print i have several of them they're 19 pounds each but 10 pounds of that goes to benefit something up in scotland to do with covid i think the local community health or something like that very nice and you can wash them on 40 degrees books da, da, da. okay just one beauty product because it stands out above everything else and I, this isn't really like a kind of vanity video makeup beauty whatever i broke the bottle so the, this just falls out which is kind of annoying but this is great this is perfect leg skin miracle by this works and it's basically the best leg makeup i've ever found i just cannot tan my lower legs it doesn't matter how much time i spend gardening or doing whatever but this is really nice it's not shimmery most body makeup stuff i'm thinking of fenty and charlotte tilbury in particular that i've tried are basically bronzy highlighters for the body and i don't know about you but i'm not doing anything so bougie that i need to look like i've been you know like dipped in gold i just need to look it makes the skin on my legs look more even a slight glow and healthy and if you haven't got time if you are going to go and meet a friend for a social distance walk and you want to wear a skirt and you're like oh my god my legs look like real chicken me um then um you can put some of this on and get an instant it smooths out veins if you've got a bit of a bruise or anything it kind of covers it up look at the difference between my two hands that one looks infinitely better it smells nice and herbal and essential oily as well got it from john lewis you can get it at boots there's a catch which stops so you can twist this and close it. I dropped it on the bathroom floor and I've broken it so I could just use it like that. I don't need to even keep this and I can't now close this so I couldn't travel with it or anything but I'll use this up pretty quick and get another one. So good. And then the last thing I want to talk about, have I talked about everything? Yes I have, is this is just an example. I saw this on Andrew, my friend Andrew's Instagram because she was talking about a haul from Zara she was going to do and I had to grab it because I've been very I love those squishy Chanel denim flaps I know a lot of people think they're hideous I love the green one that I saw someone got and um I also love those flumpy pillowy bags from like um Saint Laurent the, the Lulu the kind of puffer jacket bags but all of that to me is not a permanent thing that I would want to spend thousands on um oops it's a passing thing for me so when I saw this on Andrew's Instagram it comes in this light wash denim it comes in black like dark grey distressed denim and maybe one other colour oh, like faux leathers but I just particularly wanted I've got my Deauville big Deauville tote but I wanted like a denim shoulder or handbag and this was 29.99 a lot it says on zara quite wrongly that this is a crossbody bag they've just listed it wrong that is the length of the strap but on me it's actually perfect as a little shoulder bag or you could um change the the it has these t-bars so you could take this out and like clip a different type of strap through there or whatever just a bit of fun but what this represents is that I have used for most of lockdown I used kind of the catch isn't great it doesn't want to shut I used high street inexpensive bags at first because I was really worried about you know there was a lot of stuff about coming in and wiping everything and all of that I kind of chilled a little bit on that now so there's that one that's new I had my little bucket bag from Estella Bartlett that I got so much use out of at the beginning still love that so although I'm into my luxury stuff I don't feel like I exclusively have to have that so a definite favorite was affordable bags that I felt I could either wipe like I had a clear plastic pouchy thing with a crossbody strap things like this they're just a bit of fun it doesn't all have to be luxury and I think my perspective throughout lockdown on luxuries changed so that's why I did that vlog sale I just really was like cleaning all this out one day and I really saw a couple of things that I just thought, you know, I'm hanging on to that for re for reasons that are silly reasons. Just let it go and someone else will really love it and enjoy it. We're all different. And then I did add some new things to my collection, but I'm kind of, 
I don't know really why, but I'm biding my time to share them with you and I want to share them in the right way, maybe one at a time rather than a huge haul, because I don't think a huge haul serves any purpose than just other than just meeting my vanity. You know, it's just showing off. It is. We always deny. People used to do these disclaimers. I'm not bragging. Well, if you feel the need to share your nice things with other people, there's an element of ego involved in that. We might as well acknowledge it. You want it. You want recognition. You want to share and have, generate more excitement and, amongst your friends and stuff. And that's fine. But just be real. Um, I just watched a video. Um, is it Coffee Lover LV? I hope I said her channel right. And it really made me think like about how this whole sharing these kind of things online and how it used to feel very homespun and genuine and the kind of a lot of the people who were doing videos when I got into it are no longer around and instead there are a lot of girls who are very very professional and slick and it's about um it's all about promoting stuff from certain brands and promoting yourself to grow so that you can make money there's nothing wrong with having a living making a living as a social media person or influencer but there's a there even though there are rules now about declaring stuff and whatever there is an element of it that is just really phony and bullshit and i'm just not into it it's not what i'm 45 year old housewife i don't need to be spending my time watching tryhards who are trying to climb up some i just i can't i can't explain how i feel about that um i I enjoy people whether they've got a huge platform or a small platform if I feel a genuine energy coming from them and if I don't and they don't ever like she said in the video and they just don't ever interact anymore because they're just there's just I just get so many messages I can't respond to everyone fuck off I said it so I just follow my gut in life and go towards good energy and shy away from bad energy I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to do and, you know, with everything going on in the world, you had, we've got a pandemic of this virus and then a pandemic of crisis around racial equality that it just makes you think sometimes that the things that you focused on are kind of pathetic and not important. Not that we all have to be, not that we have to not live our lives and do the things we enjoy, but you just got to think more consciously about your thoughts, attitudes, behaviours, and for me, and put out stuff that feels a little bit worthwhile so i think for example i would still share a luxury bag with you but when i've had it for a while and i'm thinking wow when i was looking for this bag i couldn't find that much information so i'm going to share my information to help someone else that doesn't feel gratuitous but just hauling a load of stuff that you then never see again is just not really going to be ever what i do anyway this is way long enough i love you all Thank you, motorbike. Um, if you have any requests for content, because I do sometimes not know what to do, um, just leave a comment down below and then I'll get a sense of what people want. If people want an escapism and they want luxury reviews or reveals, or do you want makeup or do you want like whatever, plus size fashion, like there's lots of things I could share that are aspects of my life, but um, I only want to make stuff that you want to watch. Otherwise, what's the point, you know? Um, of making the effort to do it and if it's not gonna cheer you up or make you feel better for 20 minutes or whatever that's the whole point because that's what I get when I watch the people I enjoy anyway I hope you have a great week and I will see you next week in the next video and take care guys so this is my new blender it's got a glass jug it's quite powerful lots of automatic settings and it makes very smooth smoothies